So my name is Ian Bruce, I'm Professor of Rheumatology at the University of Manchester and I'm here at Sa uh, the ACR in San Diego 2017 and this is a Room Now podcast. Um, I've been looking at a lot of posters in lupus and vasculitis and there's been a number of posters this year from the Toronto group looking at a rare adverse event in patients with prolonged antimalarial therapy, uh, cardiac toxicity. Um, First of all, it's important to emphasize that these are rare, uncommon events, um, but they seem to present either as a dysrhythmia or with cardiac failure, um, shortness of breath, etc. cetera. Um, what you see is a, a hypertrophic, restrictive type of cardiomyopathy. And several of these patients have actually had endomyocardial biopsies done showing evacuated um, myopathy, which would be typical of um, antimalarial toxicity. Several have also been diagnosed in, with highly suggestive patterns on cardiac MR. I think one of the key take home messages from this is that when you think about patients who are on very long term uh, antimalarial therapy, that if they have a cardiac issue, whether that's a dysrhythmia, heart failure, etc., obviously ischemic heart disease, atherosclerotic heart disease is much more common in this population but one should always bear in mind the possibility that this could be related to anti-malarial drugs and speak to the cardiologist about doing the precise investigations that would help reveal this if it was there. Of note within the posters that they showed, a number of these patients actually were free of epicardial coronary heart disease, which raises more the possibility that this may have been related to anti-malarial drugs. The good news in some of these situations was that when you withdraw the drug, there is a slow, gradual improvement in cardiac function over time, um, but that can take at least two years to reverse. Sadly, in one or two patients, they um, succumb to sepsis or other issues as well. So that's important, but I think the balance of risk means that antimalarial drugs still remain overwhelmingly beneficial in the vast majority of patients with SLE, and therefore, because of the many benefits that they have, we should continue to use these. But we just need to pay uh, respect and attention to this drug, um, particularly on long-term cumulative use. This is um, on behalf of Room Now, and Room Now will be here for the rest of the week. Thank you very much.